You're seeing the live images there of the Capitol. And we're just one hour away now, or less than an hour away, from what could be um, the final January 6th House Committee hearing. It is the final hearing before midterm elections, so a significant moment in Washington, D.C. today. Yes, this is the ninth hearing by the panel, and the first one since July. The committee spent the time since its last hearing gathering testimony from potential witnesses and actors in the Capitol riot. We may hear some of that testimony today, but something different about this hearing, however, is that there will be no in-person witnesses. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us now. Hi there, Scott. Uh, you have been on this. Tell us who are some of the potential witnesses that we may hear their testimony from? And in particular, you know, I'm very interested in if we are going to learn anything more about Jenny Thomas. Yeah, well, Jenny Thomas was arguably the most sought after interview for this committee between the last hearing and today's hearing. And it's quite possible we see some of the excerpts. We read some of what she said. We're not expected to hear her voice or see her face, though, because according to one committee member, they didn't record video of that interview with Jenny Thomas, the conservative activist, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who, according to the committee, Jenny Thomas was urging the Trump inner circle to fight the 2020 election results. There have been any number of other interviews with key Trump aides, members of the cabinet, people who worked at the White House. Truly hundreds of interviews have been completed by this committee. They've collected tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pieces of paper. And the committee will dole out some nuggets from those interviews and from those papers today over the course of two, course of two and a half hours. All of this, though, sets the table for the final action from this committee later this year, likely in December, the issuance of that final written report where they have all of their comprehensive findings, potentially all the excerpts or transcripts of all their interviews, and the complete findings from A to Z from this more than one year of work. Chairman Benny Thomas had been hinting that we will learn something and see things we haven't seen before from the committee. Now, the hearing is expected to last two and a half hours, again, to our viewers. It begins in about an hour. And although there'll be no in-person witnesses, what specifically will the committee be doing then in this hearing as it apparently rolls out new information and, and continues to make its case? Yeah, Errol, you will hear from all nine members of this panel, all seven Democrats, both Republicans, will present part of this closing argument. They'll all provide some portion or some focus looking back at what they did over the summer, where they did their behind-the-scenes investigating, looking back at some of the newer information they've obtained over the past few weeks, and looking ahead to what they're likely to show in their final report and what they're likely to show before they wrap up their work at the end of this year. To be clear, the committee has promised in so many words, never before seen information and never before seen images. Those are the types of words, and that is the type of language you use when you recognize you're trying to regain America's attention, because it's been a long off-season for this committee. They've been working behind the scenes for several weeks, and there have been other investigations which have overshadowed this one, other investigations into the former president. Yeah, you know, uh, Scott, um, it seems like every time uh, preceding one of these hearings, we've heard that same tease, never before heard information, yeah. Yeah. Uh, major revelations. Uh, you also mentioned, though, the report that the committee is intended to release. Originally, we heard from Chairman Benny Thompson that he was going to release that report mid-October. Here we are sort of in mid-October. Do we expect that that report is going to have separate revelations? Will it be different from the information that the panel will lay out today? And do we have any more guidance on the timing of that report? Yeah, the report is required under the same legislation that created this committee. They are required to issue a final report codifying all their findings. And if you read the legislation carefully, which, of course, we have, it says the committee, after it issues the report, expires 30 days later. So we'll assume the committee wants to use every day it has available to it in this Congress. That would mean they'd wrap up their operations at the end of the calendar year, and that written report would come at the end of November or the 1st of December. So right after Thanksgiving is the timing of expectations. But the committee members have been emphatic. Even as they try to generate interest in their hearings, they have repeatedly said that, and, and underscored it, that the written report is where you will find not only the comprehensive details about their investigation, but their list of recommendations to prevent January 6, 2021 from happening again, whether it be changes to security, to protocols, to the Electoral Count Act, to some function of America's voting systems. 
It's possible they include that in their written report, but we know they're going to include all their findings. They've been trying to juggle two balls at the same time. In one hand, trying to keep this big ball in the air saying, watch our hearings, make sure you pay attention. This other one in the other hand, up and down in the air saying, also pay attention to our written report. It's a balancing act, but they've been working it pretty well. Well, it is a big news day, uh, oh, yeah. in particular a big news day in Washington. Scott McFarland, thanks. Thank you, Scott.